Hello, Mighty Companion. This is this is Earl Raj Purdy, and I want to welcome you to Hardcore Course in Miracles here on Facebook Live. And we're going to be talking about how do you actually be truly helpful according to the Course in Miracles? What does it mean to be truly helpful? How can you be absolutely sure that you are being helpful? We're going to talk about that and some other very powerful things from A Course in Miracles. And we're going to start out with our brother John Christmas singing our theme song, We Are One. And that will allow us to get centered and to tune in so that we'll be ready to hear this, these awesome lessons from A Course in Miracles. Thank you, mighty for companions, for being here. Here we go. So let yourself breathe. So good to see you all. So good to see you. I'm talking to you. Here we go. Yeah. There's a call for God. I see it everywhere. Everybody's running scared. Everything is turning upside down. Telling us that love is who I am. You and me were not that far apart. Yeah, we're beating the same heart. We've been together from the start. I'm Earl Purdy, right here on Facebook Live. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that I have my mighty companions, that I have my mighty companion, and that we have each other, and we on this journey back to love together. It's so good to be with you other spiritual beings expressing yourself through a human body. You are a spiritual being expressing yourself through a human body, and I'm so glad to be joined with you and connected with you.
Tell me, can you feel it? Put your arms around it and know that we are one. Oh, 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 we are one. Yeah, yeah, we are one. I love that last line where he says, I am you and you are me. I am you and you are me. I am you and you are me. Hey, I'm Earl, Earl Purdy. And I want to welcome to welcome you to Hardcore Course in Miracles. There's just one little thing you need to remember to get the most out of what the Course in Miracles is saying. Do you know the Course in Miracles says you need to remember only this? What is it that you need to remember? You need to remember that you need not believe the ideas. You need not accept the ideas. You need not even welcome the ideas. Some of the ideas, you may actively resist some of the ideas. Some of the ideas, you may actively resist some of the ideas. Some of the ideas you will find hard to believe. Some of the ideas you will find hard to believe. Some of the ideas may seem quite startling. Some of the ideas may startle you, startle you. Some of the ideas, and of course in miracles, may startle you. Some of the things that I say from A Course in Miracles may startle you. You are not asked, you are not asked to analyze the ideas at all. You are not asked to judge the ideas at all. So what is it that will show you that the ideas in A Course in Miracles are true? How will you, how will you actually know the ideas in the Course in Miracles are true. Well, you would have to use the ideas. It's the use, their use, will give the ideas meaning to you and will show you that the ideas are true. Using the ideas, not analyzing the ideas. But the first thing, you have to hear the ideas. So what I am I'm the divine repetition teacher. I'm your remembering coach. I've, I have been studying and teaching A Course in Miracles for over 41 years. And the most important thing you can do with The Course in Miracles is to remember what it's saying and then apply the ideas to your way of looking at things. Those are the, those are the two things to make the Course in Miracles work. Unless you remember it, you certainly haven't learned it. So it really is about remembering it, which is my emphasis. So remember, it's about remembering the ideas and then using the interpretations that the Course in Miracles is giving you. That's how you make the Course in Miracles work. First, you have to hear the ideas and remember the ideas. And then you use the interpretations of your day-to-day -day experience that the Course in Miracles is teaching. The Course in Miracles, the Course in Miracles is three books in one. A text, a workbook, and a manual for teachers. It's all in the same book. Do you know that in order to get the miracles and the blessings and the love that the Course in Miracles promises, you must do the workbook lessons. In order to learn how to apply the Course in Miracles in your everyday life, 
doing the workbook lessons is essential. It's essential that you do the workbook lessons in order to apply A Course in Miracles and to see the truth of the Course in Miracles. We're going to be in chapter four, chapter four, in the Illusions of the Ego, section seven, section seven, paragraph five. It's on page 70, page 70 in the Course in Miracles text, the foundation for inner peace version of A Course in Miracles, the blue book. I teach in a question and answer format. So let's get started. One thing I would love to share with you is that the Course in Miracles, don't make the Course in Miracles complicated. Don't make the Course in Miracles complicated. Don't let your ego, your programming from the world, make a Course in Miracles complicated. Do you know the Course in Miracles says you can break everything down to two things, two emotions, love or fear. That's what you feel, my dear, love or fear. That's all you felt today, my dear, love or fear. That's all you feel. Everything that you feel is some form of love or some form of fear. That's all the Course in Miracles is talking about. How to remove the blocks to love, how to undo fear and separation. God is love. Do you know that God is love? So you could substitute the word love for wherever you see God, wherever you see the Holy Spirit, Whenever you see the word Jesus of A Course in Miracles, you could also use the word love. And whenever you see ego or separation or anger or guilt or grievances, that's just another form of fear and separation. Let's keep it simple. So, do you know that God, who encompasses all beings, Created beings who have everything. You have everything. Do you know that in your truest nature, as you were created by God, you have everything. Your true self, your real self, has everything. Because do you know the Course just said, God created beings who have everything individually. So individually... You have everything. So how do you increase your joy? How do you increase your joy? Well, you want to share everything. You want to share love to increase your joy. So if you want to increase what you have, you share it. To increase what you have, you share it. In order to increase what you have, what do you do? You have to share it. That's a universal law. So it applies to everything. I don't care what you name. If you share it, you increase it. If you share anger, you increase anger. If you share peace, you increase peace. If you share guilt, if you try to put guilt trips on someone or you share guilt or you focus on someone else's guilt, you increase it. Do you know that if you focus in on innocence and peace, you increase it? Who You share it to increase it. So if you want to increase your happiness, you share your happiness because What is the one thing you need to remember? Nothing real can be increased except by sharing. Nothing real can be increased except by sharing it. If it's real and you want to increase it, you have to share it. 
That's why God created you. Have you ever wondered why the creator created you? Have you ever wondered why love created you? Have you ever wondered why God created you? Would you like to know why? Well, it says it right here. Nothing real can be increased except by sharing. And that's why God created you. That's why love created you. You were created to share joy. You were created to share love. You were created to share peace. You were created to share the truth. You were created to share abundance. So another term for God, what would be another term for God? Divine abstraction. That's another term for God. It says right here, let me read it to you. Divine, 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 divine abstraction takes joy in sharing. God love takes joy in sharing. That is what creation means. Sometimes people ask me, well, what does the course mean by creation or to create? It means share. It means extend love. To create, the Course in Miracles teaches that to create is to extend. It is to share. So how you share, what you share, to whom you share, do you know that's irrelevant? Because what is it that real creation gives? Well, real creation gives everything. Everything. But when I talk about everything, I'm not talking about your material possessions, even though it's perfectly okay for you to give your physical possessions if that what you choose to do. But the Course in Miracles it's talking about thoughts of love, perceptions of love. It's talking about spirit. It's talking about inner qualities. So real creation, the real extension of love gives everything. Since real creation, real love can create only like itself. You are love. So you in your truest nature can only extend love in your real self. In your true self, do you know you can only extend love? So here's the, what, what is the word that the Course in Miracles uses really, really, really often? It says, remember, 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 remember that in the kingdom, which the Course calls reality, the kingdom is love. So remember that in reality, in truth, in the kingdom, there is no difference between having and being as there is in existence. So what does that mean? You can have a car, but that doesn't mean you're being your car. But in reality, in spirit, in truth, Having and being are the same thing. Let me, would you like to get an example of what I'm talking about? If I want to have love, I have to be love. If I want to have peace, I have to be peaceful. Whatever I have, I must be. There's no difference from having freedom and being free. So be what you want to have. That's what you must do. Be what you want to have. If you want to have more joy, then you need to be more joyful. If you want to have more understanding, then you must be understanding. If you want to have more fun, then you need to be more fun. If whatever you want to have, you must be. You must be the thing you want to have. Do you know that some people want really loving people in their life, but they are personally very fearful and suspicious? Well, you have to be loving if you want to have love in your life. You must learn to do what? You must learn to be what you want to have. So if you're in the state of being, what happens? Well, if you're in the state of being, the mind gives everything always. 
So in the state of being, your mind is giving love always because love is the only thing that's real. God is the only thing that's real. Love is the only thing that's real. And anything that's not loving will not last. Anything that's not loving will not last. Anything that doesn't bring joy, happiness, peace, it can't last because the creator created it where the only thing that is eternal, the only thing that is eternal, the only thing that is permanent is love. So what is it that the Bible repeatedly states? What is it that, what is it that the Bible says over and over again? The Bible says you should praise God. Mm. You should praise God. The Bible says what? You should praise God. But this hardly means, this doesn't mean that you should tell God how wonderful God is. Praising God isn't constantly telling your creator how wonderful your creator is. Praising God is not constantly flooding God with compliments. Do you know why <clears throat> it's not about telling God how wonderful God is? Well, the truth is God has no ego with which to accept such praise. So God doesn't have an ego. So it's, so it's not about constantly being praised to God. And God doesn't have any perception, any, any uh, judgment with which to judge your praise. But do you know that unless you take your part, do you know that unless you do your part, do you know that unless you take your part in the creation, God's joy isn't complete. Your creator's joy isn't complete unless you take your part in the creation. Unless you fulfill your function of being a light, a joy in this world, wherever you are, then the Course in Miracles says God's joy is not complete because if your joy isn't complete, then God's joy isn't complete. Then if your happiness isn't complete, do you know that your creator's happiness isn't complete? If your happiness isn't complete, do you know that the Course in Miracles says God knows when your happiness is not complete? Your creator knows when you are not completely happy. Think about that. Isn't it great news to know that your creator knows when you are not completely happy? Are you aware that God knows when you are not happy in God's own being? So the Course in Miracles is saying, whenever your happiness isn't complete, do you know your creator knows it? Your creator knows it in its own being and your creator knows when you're not happy in its experience of your experience. So that means God is having the experience of your experience. You are created in a sense to give the creator the experience of your experience. Well, do you know that God is experiencing your experience? God in God's experience is aware of your experience and when you're not happy, when you're not completely joyful, the Course in Miracles says your creator knows it. Your creator knows it. Now, the outgoing of God's love, so the outgoing of God's love is blocked whenever one of God's channels are closed. Are you aware that you are a channel, each and every one of you? You are a channel for the going out of God's love. You are a channel for love to extend. You are a channel. So the constant going out of the Creator's love, the constant going out of love is blocked whenever you are closed. And do you know that the Course says God is lonely when you, the minds that God created, do not communicate fully with God. And it's time for us to let go of the pain. It's time for us to let go of the pain. Take a breath. Take a breath. Let this in. Let this in. 
stay in, in our heads. Let's not make the Course in Miracles a head trip. It's a heart Fear trip. is illusion that we must see beyond. We've got to see beyond fear. No, that the Father, yes, He made us all as one. We were made all as one. Never been alone. Here lies the kingdom that has always been your home. Oh, oh, oh. Take a breath, take a breath. Welcome home. Welcome home. Now has come and we've begun to find that hidden treasure. We found. It's been with us forever. It's time to sing a song of grace. A song to hear the human race. The melody returns to me again. When I realize I knew the harmony starts caught up in love the last embrace that's john christmas at www.johnchristmas.com that's love's last embrace you can download that music for free ah. so now we are on chapter four section seven paragraph seven now listen to me right now. Just listen. Don't analyze. Listen. God has kept your kingdom for you. That means God has kept your reality, your love for you. But God cannot share God's joy with you until when? God can't share God's joy with you until you know God's joy with your whole mind. So that means what? 
That means revelation isn't enough because revelation is only communication from God. Communication from God to you is called revelation. Revelation is God communicating. God communicating. God communicating to you. That's revelation. Now, God, the creator, do you know that God doesn't need revelation returned to God? It's not about you making God aware of your revelations because that would be clearly impossible for you to make God aware of something. <laughs> so the Course in Miracles says, but God does want revelation brought to others. In A Course in Miracles, one of the definitions of revelation is unspeakable love. Revelation is unspeakable love. It's, it's love that is so incredible that there are not words to describe those, that kind of love. It, it, uh, unspeakable love. That's what revelation is. So, God does want your revelations brought to others, but this can't be done with the actual revelation because the content of a revelation cannot be expressed. Why is it that the content of a revelation cannot be expressed? Because the content of a revelation is intensely personal to the mind that receives the revelation. So revelation is so intensely personal that you cannot express the content of a true revelation. But you can bring that revelation to other, ma uh, to other minds. So how do you bring that revelation to other minds? How do you bring that unspeakable love to other minds? The Course in Miracles says, through the attitudes, through your new attitude, through the attitudes the knowledge from the revelation brings. Your revelation should cause you to have a new attitude. And that new attitude would be how you would bring that revelation of unspeakable love to those around you. So if you're really doing it right and you're having that unspeakable love, if you're receiving that, that revelation from God, it should change your attitude. It should make you so much more of a loving, joyful, peaceful person that people are aware of your revelation because of the change in you. Your friends and relatives should know that the Course in Miracles is helping you because they should see a change in your attitude. They should see a change in the love that's being extended to you, through you. They should see a change in you. That's how you let people know the power of the revelations that you are having. So when is God praised? How do you praise God according to A Course in Miracles? What does it mean to praise God? Since it, since it said it doesn't mean it's about sitting around telling God how wonderful God is. So what is the praise? How do you praise your creator? Well, the Course says, whenever your mind learns to be wholly helpful. Do you know that whenever you're being helpful, you are praising God? Whenever you are being helpful, you are praising God. Whenever you are being helpful, you are praising God. Whenever you are being helpful, you are praising God. Whenever you are being helpful, you are praising God. Praising God, praising God, praising God. Whenever you are being helpful, that's praising God. So that means that praising God isn't about sitting around telling God how wonderful God is. Praising God means that you are being helpful. You are being a loving, helpful person. That's praising God. Now, it's impossible. What is the condition in which it's impossible to be helpful? Well, you are never helpful unless you are totally harmless. So a person who is harmful isn't helpful. A person who is harmful is not helpful. Whenever a person is attacking, they're not helpful. Whenever you are attacking, you're not being helpful. Whenever you are angry, you're not being helpful. Whenever a person attacks, they're not being helpful. It's impossible to praise God and attack. The Course in Miracles says, it's impossible to be wholly helpful without being wholly harmless. So, they, so what, the, what are the two beliefs that must exist? You must believe in being helpful and you must believe in being harmless. That you are not a person 
that wants to hurt or will hurt anyone or attempt to hurt anyone. So anyone that's angry all the time, upset all the time, projecting all the time, attacking people all the time, that's not a person who's helpful. And that's not a person that's praising God. So, now what is the benefit of being truly helpful? What is, the, what is one of the benefits of being truly helpful? Well, it says it in the next sentence. The truly helpful are invulnerable. The truly helpful are invulnerable. So if you are truly helpful, you cannot be hurt. A truly helpful person cannot be hurt. A truly helpful person, a truly helpful being can't be hurt. Why is it that a truly helpful being is invulnerable? Because someone that's truly helpful, someone who cannot be hurt, is someone that's not protecting their ego. Somebody that's not protecting their misperception. Somebody that's not protecting their anger and their upset. Somebody that's not protecting their ego. Now, when you are not protecting the ego, nothing can hurt you. When you're not protecting your ego, your fear, your guilt, your anger, the Course in Miracles says nothing can hurt you. If you are truly a harmless, helpful being, nothing can hurt you. Because to be helpful, you have to be totally harmless. And if you are truly helpful, if you are truly harmless, then you are invulnerable because you're not protecting your ego. So do you know that when you're not protecting your ego, nothing can hurt you? When you're not protecting your old conditioning, your old self-concepts, when you're not protecting your old fearful thoughts or angry thoughts, when you're not protecting your grievances, when you are not trying to be right more than you want to be happy, then nothing can hurt you. So the Course in Miracles just told us how to be in the world and be in the world where nothing can hurt you. And unless you have done this, you don't know if it's true, right? So before you can judge the truth of this, you would have to focus in on being totally helpful. So how do you become totally helpful? You become totally helpful by not wanting to hurt or attack anyone. So your helpfulness is what? Your helpfulness is your praise of God. Your helpfulness is your praise of God. And do you know God will return your praise of God? Because when you are being helpful, when you are not attacking, then you are like God. Because God is love. And love does not attack. Love does not hurt. So the Course in Miracles says, your helpfulness is your praise of your creator. And your creator is going to return your praise because when you are being helpful and harmless, when you're being helpful and peaceful, then you are being like God. That's what it means to be like God. It means to be loving. It means to be kind. It means to be free. It means to be forgiving. So since you are like God, whenever you are being helpful, whenever you're being loving, then you and God, you and your creator can rejoice together. So when you and God are the same way, what does that mean? When you want to be helpful, when you want to be peaceful, when you don't want to hurt, when you don't want to harm or attack others, then you are praising God. And therefore, you and God, you are one because you're being just like your creator. And then God goes out to you and through you. So when you're choosing to not protect your ego, when you're choosing to be helpful, when you're choosing to be harmless, then love will go out to you and love will go through you. And then when love comes to you, and when love flows through you, there is great joy throughout the kingdom. So let me get this straight. God is praised whenever I decide to be totally helpful. It's impossible for me to be totally helpful unless I'm totally harmless, which means I don't wish anybody harm and I don't try to harm or hurt anyone. 
Now, the ones that I'm truly helpful and truly harmless, then I will be invulnerable. I won't be able to be hurt because I'm not protecting my ego. And if you're not protecting my, your ego, nothing can hurt you, okay? Now, whenever, you, whenever I'm being helpful, then that's the way I'm praising God. And so then God's going to return that praise to me because I'm being like God when I'm being loving and helpful. And then God and I can rejoice together. My creator and I can rejoice together. Love and I can rejoice together. Now, of course, a miracle student and listener, are you noticing what I'm doing? What I'm doing is I'm attempting to remember what I've heard and I'm attempting to remember the attitudes that I need to have in order to not be able to be hurt because I want to be safe. And this paragraph is telling me how to be safe because whatever I extend is what I'm going to increase. Whatever I am, that's what I'm going to attract to me. So the best way for me to be safe in the world is for me to be helpful and harmless. If I'm truly helpful, now that's when I'll be completely invulnerable. So every mind that's changed is going to add to this joy. So when your mind is changed, you're going to add to this joy. You're going to add to this love. And how are you going to add to the love? You're going to add to the love with your individual willingness to share in the joy. So sharing and adding to joy and happiness simply means you say, well, you know what? I'm willing to share in the love. I'm willing to share in the joy. I am willing to share in the happiness. I am willing to share in the happiness. I am willing to share in the happiness. I am willing to share in happiness. I am willing to share in the love. You are willing to share in the love. If you are willing to share in the love, if you are willing to share in the love, then you're adding to this joy. You're adding to the joy. You're adding to the happiness. When you're willing to have it, when you're willing to have love, when you're willing to, to share in the joy, when you're willing to be in happiness, when you're willing to be in peace, then you're adding to it. So who are the truly helpful? Those who are truly helpful, the Course in Miracles calls those who are truly helpful God's miracle workers. So a miracle worker is just somebody that's truly helpful. If you're really helpful, if you are really someone that wants to extend the joy, extend the peace, if you are someone who wants to be the love, then the Course in Miracles says to you right now that you are a miracle worker. And if you are a miracle worker, if you are a miracle worker, if you are someone who wants to express love, someone that wants to express joy, then Jesus of the Course in Miracles says, the truly helpful are God's miracle workers whom I direct until we are all united in the joy of the kingdom. So a miracle worker, a love worker, a forgiveness worker is someone that allows themselves to be directed by Jesus, someone that allows themselves to be directed by love until we are all united. So how long should I allow myself to be directed by Jesus? I should allow myself to be directed by Jesus until we are all united in the joy, in the joy of the kingdom, in the joy of reality, in the joy of love. Now, Jesus of the Course in Miracles says, I will direct you. I will direct you. Love says, I will direct you. I will direct you where? I will direct you to wherever you can be truly helpful. I'm going to direct you wherever you can be truly helpful. So that's what made me be willing to teach A Course in Miracles full time is my calling in the world. Because the Course in Miracles says that Jesus said that I'll send you those people who can learn through you and basically the way you are is best for them in terms of their own level of understanding. So if you really want to have relationships that work, friendships that work, you want to let Jesus direct you to wherever you can be truly helpful. You need to let love direct you to wherever you can be truly helpful. And you need to let Jesus direct you to whoever can follow his guidance through you. 
So I want God to direct me to the people who can follow God's guidance through me. As a teacher, I want Jesus to direct me to whoever can follow God's guidance through me. I want to experience whoever can follow the guidance of God and love through me, not from me, but through me. Whew. Okay, let's take another quick look at that, that paragraph. That was a deep paragraph. Don't forget, you've got to listen to this and watch it at least four times. Course in Miracles students, I'm telling you, it's the repetition, it's the remembering what it's saying that will give you the miracles and the correct perception. It's not the analyzation of it, and it's not trying to. It's not about trying to fit a course in miracles into what you already believe. It's about remembering what it's saying, and that's exactly what I want you to do by listening to this over and over and over again. Mm. So, when is God praised? Well, God is praised whenever you learn to be totally helpful. Now, it's impossible for you to be totally helpful unless you are not kicking butt and getting angry and attacking everybody all the time. You got to be totally harmless, which means you're not someone that's trying to hurt others. Now, being helpful and being harmless, those are the two beliefs that have to coexist. If, you're going to, if you say you're helpful, then you're somebody that's peaceful. A helpful being is a peaceful being, a harmless being. And harmless doesn't mean weak. A harmless being is the strongest being on earth. The strongest being on earth is a peaceful one. Never forget that. So being harmless doesn't mean that you are weak and somebody can just run all over you. If you are truly helpful and harmless, you wouldn't even attract pain or suffering into your perception and into your experience. So when you decide to be truly helpful, then you become invulnerable. You become invulnerable because you're not protecting your past learnings. You're not protecting your ego. You're not protecting your fears and your patterns and your grievances. And so when that's truly happening, do you know nothing can hurt you? And so when you are being helpful, do you know that when you are being helpful, that is your praise of God? And then God is going to return that praise because when you are being helpful, you are being like God. And so when you're being helpful, you and God can rejoice together. Then God, which is love, goes out to you and through you. There will be great joy. There will be great joy throughout the kingdom, throughout reality, when you are helpful and harmless and joined with God, who is love. Every mind that is changed, when you are changed, do you know you're going to add to the joy? You're going to add to the joy because you will have an individual willingness to share in the love, to share in the joy. Mm, mm, mm. So what does it take to be a miracle worker? To be a miracle worker, you must be truly helpful. You must be truly helpful. You must be truly helpful to be a miracle worker. You must be truly helpful to be a miracle worker. Jesus will direct you until we are all united in the joy of the kingdom. We have a teacher. We have a teacher. Jesus is our elder brother speaking to us through a course in miracles. Guess what? Jesus says, I will direct you. I will direct you. Who are you going to be directed to by love? Wherever you can be truly helpful, I'm going to direct you to wherever you can be truly helpful, truly helpful, truly helpful. Guess what? I will direct you to whoever can follow my guidance through you. That's what Jesus is telling us now. You will be directed to whoever can follow the guidance of Jesus through you, which is the guidance of love. We are talking about following guidance. Now, I'm going to do a quick recap of everything that I covered and the main points in just a minute. As a full-time teacher of A Course in Miracles, I would appreciate a donation. If you'd like to make a donation, you can go to my website, www.earlpurdy.com, P-U-R-P-U-R-D-Y. You can also use Venmo. 
You can use the Cash App. You can use PayPal. And you can use Zelle. All you need is my email address. My my email address is earlpurdy at earlpurdy.com. Earlpurdy at earlpurdy.com. If you're if you are interested in knowing more about and attending a private Zoom class that I shall be doing in the near future for Course in Miracles students who actually read the course, study the course. Uh, if you read the course and study the course, this is for people who read the course and study the course and want to take advantage of my 41 years of teaching it and learning it. It's an advanced mind training class. Then email me. Email me at earlpurdy at earlpurdy.com so I can put you on the list. Earlpurdy at earlpurdy.com. I'm also available for clarity sessions. If you'd like to get a new perception and another way of looking at something that you're going through right now and you really need another way to look at it and another way to approach it and another way to handle it, then I'm available for a clarity session to, t- to share with you exactly how you would handle it according to the Course in Miracles in order to get past it. I'm also a, a sole purpose astrologer and numerologist for those who are open to spirit communicating and getting information in that way. And I would be glad to do an interpretation for you and with you. Uh, Just go to my website, look under the Clarity Session tab, and it will explain in detail about my services. Do you know that on Sunday at 1 p.m. Mountain Time, I do another Facebook Live, A Course in Miracles? And you can also attend that one if, if you're in the Denver, Colorado area. I do it at 1555 Race Street, 1555 Race Street, Race, R-A-C-E, Street, here in Denver, Colorado, 80206. You're welcome to attend in person and watch it or watch it online. Ah, I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of classes on YouTube and on Facebook, including all the workbook lessons. I'm here to be truly helpful and I truly want to be peaceful and harmless. And that and so that was the information. We got some great information today. You all are treasures to me, priceless treasures to me. I'm more grateful to you and than you could possibly even imagine. For us to join together to remember who we are together is the greatest thing we could ever do. So let me do a quick recap of the main messages we heard. Are you ready? So just let yourself hear it. I appreciate you and love you too. Absolutely. God who encompasses all beings. Do you know that God created you? God created you with everything. And you should want to increase what you have by share it to increase it. Whatever you want to increase, you need to share it. So if it's real creation, if it's real creation, then it creates just like itself. Love creates love and peace creates peace and forgiveness creates forgiveness and oneness creates oneness because love can create only like itself. So if you want to have something, you need to be it. Don't forget, having and being are the same. If you want to have love and friendship and peace in your life, then you need to be a friend. You need to you need to be what you want to have. 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 Now, what do we mean when we say praise God? Well, we heard we heard in this particular lesson that it doesn't mean you should be telling God, the Creator, how wonderful it is. Praising God. Praising God. What does that mean? Well, first of all, don't forget that whenever you are not happy, your creator knows it. Your creator knows everything that you feel. Your creator knows when you are not joyful, when you are not happy. And whenever you are closed, whenever you are blocked with anger, fear, or grievances, then that you are a channel that is closed. Do you know that the Course says that the constant going out of God's love is blocked when you are closed. 
And do you know that the Course in Miracles says that your creator is lonely when you do not communicate fully with your creator? But guess what? Guess what? Guess what? God has kept your kingdom for you. God cannot share God's go God cannot share God's love with you until you know it with your whole mind. So what about revelation? What is revelation? Revelation is communication from God. God does not need revelation return to God. God doesn't need revelation return to God. But God does want revelation brought to others. God does want unspeakable love and unspeakable truth brought to others. But this can't be done with the actual revelation. The content of your revelations cannot be expressed because revelations are intensely personal to the man that receives the revelation. So your revelations are going to be intensely personal. But you can bring the revelation to other people. How do you bring the revelation to other people? Through the attitudes that you have through the new attitudes that you are demonstrating. That's how you bring revelation. It should change you in some way. Unspeakable love and truth should change you in some way. And that new attitude, that's how you're going to bring the revelation to others. So do you know how to praise God? Do you know how to praise God? God is praised whenever any man learns to be wholly helpful. God is praised whenever any man learns to be wholly helpful. Now, are you aware that it's impossible for you to be truly helpful unless you are truly harmless? Unless you are peaceful and not attacking, you can't be truly helpful. But when you are harmless and helpful and you are not protecting your ego, then you are a being that nothing can hurt. So do you remember? Do you remember what I said? Your helpfulness is your praise of God and God will return your praise. Because when you are being helpful and loving, when you are being helpful and loving, then you are like God. Being like God means to be helpful and harmless so you can rejoice with God together. Then God is going to go out to you and through you and there will be great joy within the kingdom. Now, you can add to this joy if you're willing to share in the joy. Are you willing to be happy? Are you willing to be loved? Are you willing to share in the abundance? Do you know that a miracle worker is someone that's truly helpful? Now, you don't have to worry about how you're going to handle all of this because the truly helpful are God's miracle workers whom Jesus will direct until we are all united in the joy. Love is going to direct us until we are all united. Jesus is going to direct us until we are all united in love. Jesus is going to direct us until we are all united in love. Guess what else? Jesus is going to direct you to whoever, wherever you can be truly helpful. Love is going to direct you. Your teacher, your teacher, your perfect inner teacher is going to direct you to wherever you can be truly helpful. Jesus is going to direct you to wherever you can be truly helpful. Jesus is going to direct you to who? To wherever. Wherever. Jesus is going to direct you wherever, to wherever, to wherever, to wherever you can be truly helpful. That's where Jesus is going to direct you. Jesus is going to direct you to whoever can follow his guidance through you. Listen to me now. Jesus is going to direct you to whoever can follow love's guidance through you. So you don't have to worry about it. You will be directed to whoever can follow the guidance of love through you. You're going to be directed to wherever you can be really helpful. 
If you are truly a miracle worker, if you are someone that's decided to be totally helpful and totally harmless, if you are someone that's decided to share in the joy, if you're someone that has decided to share in the happiness, then that makes you a miracle worker, a miracle worker, a miracle worker. And if you are a miracle worker, guess what's happening? Nothing can hurt a miracle worker. Nothing can hurt a miracle worker. Nothing can help a miracle worker. Nothing can help. Nothing can hurt. Nothing can hurt a miracle worker. No one, nothing can hurt a miracle worker. And you are becoming a miracle worker. That means you are becoming truly helpful. It's happening. You're moving in that direction. So you should be, rejoice in the fact that you are not alone and that you are becoming a miracle worker. Mighty My Facebook Live classes are on the Earl Purdy page on Facebook, on the Earl Purdy page. That's where you would watch these Facebook Live classes, on the Earl Purdy page on Facebook. I'm looking forward to connecting with you again. I'm going to listen to this over and over again because this section told me how I could be in the world and be totally safe and not hurt at all. And it told me how to truly praise God and how to allow myself to be directed to the people who would be best for me and best for you. I love you. I appreciate you. This is Earl Purdy and May the course be with you. Appreciate you so much. Share this video, please.